Praise God. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are cleared for flight. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You are cleared for what? Flight. That's what they tell people or tell airlines when they're about to take off. They'll mention your name and say you are cleared, you know, for flight. Let's look at the word for the year. Exodus 19. We'll start from verse 3. Exodus 19. From verse 3. All right. It says, And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountains, saying, Thus said, I mean, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel. Next verse. Um, give me NIV or something. I want to carry it. Yes, very important. He said, you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I what? Carried you on what? Eagle's wings. God described all the things he did in Egypt. He summarized it in one phrase. He said, I carried you in eagle's wings carried you on eagle's wings. It says, I brought you to myself. I carried you on eagle's wings. I prophesy over every member of this house. This year, God will carry you on eagle's wings. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I say, God will carry you on eagle's wings. That means you will get to great heights, but it will be by your power. Eagles fly very high. Eagles fly what? Very high. In fact, scripture shows us that the, the, the height the eagles fly is part of their identity. It's part of their, they put their nest very high. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That they put their nest very high. They carry their prey very high. The they, 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 they height is part of it. So for, for every member of this house, you will get to amazing heights in your career. You will get to amazing height in your industry. If you receive it, shout a louder amen this morning. I'm talking to you, every member of this house. Heights you have never gotten to before. This is the year you will get there in the name of Jesus. I say levels you have never entered before. This is the year you will enter it in the name of Jesus. It's good to enter new heights. Huh? Don't get used to where you are. Don't get used to what? Where you are. They flap all the way. Bah, 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 bah. If the activity, you think they are going somewhere, you just hear they are going. The flapping is so much. But when you see eagles, when you see eagles, they just do one, two. One, two, the remaining. They just saw. Somebody is going to fly with ease this year. Somebody is going to soar with ease this year. They said that eagles can soar for actually miles, hundreds of miles, just like this, and checking out everything, how life is going on the ground. This year, the bad things you'll be hearing will be far from you. You'll be hearing it from a distance, but it will not come near you. The hardship they will discuss in this country this year, you will hear it from a distance, it will come near you. The lack they will discuss in this country this year, you only hear it from a distance, it will come near you. If you receive it, shout a louder amen this morning. Very important. He said, how I carried you on eagle's wings. Come and say with me, I'm ready to be carried. So you are cleared for flight. You are what? Cleared for flight. That's the word God gave. So literally what God did this year is like he announced, like all those people that announced at the airport. Fly two, three, two. Arik, uh, two. Okay, Arik never goes on time. Uh, <laughs> Ibom, <A. laughs> three, two, three. <laughs> Last boarding call. And those guys, I don't know why their voice is never clear. You can miss your flight if you're not listening. <laughs> is somebody getting what I'm saying? So that's what the word of the year is. It is God announcing 
that there is last burden call and that you are cleared for flight. You are taking off this year. I say you are taking off this year. I say you are taking off this year. In the name of Jesus. I'm so excited about this year. Hallelujah. Things you have never seen. Things you have never experienced. Take bold steps this year. Take what? Bold steps this year. God will carry you the rest of the journey. The eagle flaps one, two, and begins, begins to. So take a little effort, but take steps. Take bold what? Steps. Of the dreams you have, the goals you have. Take steps. You are cleared for flight. See the next verse, though. I discovered you can be cleared for flight, but miss your flight. Mm, did you hear that? So, he said, now, if you do what? I can't hear you. If you do what? If you do what? Verse 4 says you are cleared for flight, but verse 5 shows what the burden pass is. He said, if you obey me, how? Did he say obey me partially? Did he say obey me sometimes? If you obey me, what? Fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations, you will be what? My treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine. That means he said the whole earth belongs to me, but you will now be a treasured possession inside that whole earth. If you do what? I'm not hearing you. If you do what? Say it louder. If you do what? Obey me fully. So obedience is a key this year. You are starting a new year. What are you going to do differently? Obey fully. I want to appeal to you. I want to beg you. I want to ask you. Obey fully. It pays to obey God. It pays to obey God. This life is, you, you, you don't deserve suffering. Are you a slave? Okay, you, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> but you are not legally a slave a slave do you understand you understand what I'm saying <laughs> uh, they, they were proper slaves there in Egypt and God carried them on eagle's wings you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are partially free here <laughs> yeah so there's no excuse why he won't carry you is somebody getting what I'm saying so, 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 don't think, don't stop thinking Nigeria is your problem. Stop thinking price of oil and price of dollars and all this. They are not your problem. If you can have that mental shift, if you can have that mental shift, if you can have that mental shift, you will see that things on the outside too will shift for you. It's, it's, the real battle is in the mind. It's in how you are thinking. That's the real battle. As we have time to continue this series this month, I will try and go into that. Your perception is your reality. There's nothing like reality. Every reality is based on what you think and believe. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If you think you won't make it, you are right. If you think you will make it, you are right. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? If you think you can't, you are right. If you think you can, you are right. Look at this. Say, if you obey me fully. Look at the next verse, guys. Said, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So, this was God's direct command from Moses to them. That you know how I carried your eagle's wings. That if you obey me fully, we'll continue that idea. See the next verse. So, Moses went back and summoned the elders. And he told them the thing that God said. All right? That this is what God says I should speak to you. Look at the next verse. And the people all did what? I can't hear you. The people all did what? They answered God back. They said, we will do what? Everything that the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer also what? Back to the Lord. That should be your agreement this year. Eh? God said, you will be on eagle's wings. Obey me fully. What's your answer? Some people didn't catch it all. Ah, some people didn't get it. Let's read it again. Come back to the Bible. Everybody. 
Let's read verse 8 together. Everybody want to read. So what's your answer to God now? Thank you. Louder. What's your answer to God? So pick your phone, everybody. Pick your phone like you're on a call. Pick your phone like you're on a call. So now God is about to talk to you. Are you with your phone? Did you give me God's own? What God said. So when I finish what God has said, you will give your answer. Are we, are we okay? Thank you. Put your phone here. It's prophetic action. Obey. Obey. You see, some of you have not started obeying. Obey. Put here. You. Okay, let me do like God. <coughs> you yourselves. I don't know why we think that's how God talks, though. <laughs> you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt. How I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Wait, I've not finished. <laughs> now, if you obey me fully and keep my comf what? <laughs> eh? I can't hear. <laughs> the sound effect. Okay, ah, the hears. Thank you. Now. If you obey me fully, 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 fully. <laughs> Put your hand where you're on color and keep my covenant. Then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possessions, although the whole earth is mine. Now you answer. I didn't hear you. Thank you. So that's how the call went. Even though Moses was the one physically doing the call, but that's how the call went. God called Moses say, go and tell my people that they should remember how I carried them on eagles' wings, that you'll be a treasured nation, that this year will not be, will be sweet for you. Go and tell them, but they should obey me fully for everything to work. So Moses told them, and they replied. I like that they replied. They say, we, we will do everything. They say they responded together, that we will do everything that the Lord has said. Every spiritual prophecy or action that puts all the responsibility on God is the height of irresponsibility. And that's what we specialize in Africa. We think, God, you do it. You, God doesn't fill form. God doesn't package CV. Are you getting what I'm saying? God doesn't send application. God doesn't read books to develop. God doesn't get certifications. God doesn't get degrees. Is somebody get what I'm saying? God doesn't have human connection where he, he behaves well to. But in Africa, our idea of a breakthrough and of things, God, do it, do it, do it. No, you can see what happened here. God gave them a promise, but it was, there was a condition attached. And they responded well. They said, we will do everything that God has said. Same thing applies this year, guys. If you want to be on eagle's wings, Obedience is the number one key because you can be cleared for flight and miss your flight. How many people have missed a flight before? Can I see your hand? You have ever missed your flight? How many people have been on a flight before? <laughs> because you are too few. If you have missed your flight, it's very sad. If you ever missed your flight, it's one of the most horrible things that can happen to you. You feel dejected. I don't know why. You feel like they've taken off without you. Sometimes you even see the plane going. It's very, very depressing. The day, the first time I and Pastor Mildred and uh, I think we were with our first daughter then, missed our flight. Ah, from that day I made up my mind not to miss flight again. It was very bad. It was very sad. And part of, that's part of why I even like to fly business class now. I discovered in this life, eh, that equality thing is only in our in imagination. It's not in real life. In real life, there's no equality anything. Everybody treats you based on levels. Because when we rushed, it, now, that's why I say you can be cleared for flight and miss your flight. We, we, did, we had checked, you know. We came earlier in the morning to the airport. No, it wasn't Nigeria. Checked in, put our baggage. But we had a long time to the flight. We said, let's enter town and go and play. I'm the one that said, I know she will not. She permitted. It's too serious. Eh? The time was long. It was. For somebody that knows what to do. So we checked in, we dropped our bag, we entered town to go and play. Believing that we'll come back before the flight takes off. Bad idea. 
Bad idea. <laughs> so we entered town. We we're grooving, checking people, seeing people. As we wanted to rush back to the airport, traffic. Traffic. So when we got there, we said, we're on this source of flights. Ah, they said, they've closed counter. Then they quickly asked us, are you business class? Because for those that are business class, you, you can never be late. Sometimes they even hold the plane for you. Uh, that's why I say you must prosper this year. Or, <laughs> eh? There's nothing like reality in life. It depends on levels. It depends on what? Levels. I've learned a lot of places where they give you rules. Eh? That rules can be changed depending on who is coming. One time we were flying from London. They were telling us, you have to be on time. This is the other thing. We are going to lock the gate. We bought the, I mean, you know me. Pastor Midian knows. Me, I don't like to be first to board. I like to be last to board. I'll go and buy Starbucks when people are going. So, so we oh, let's go, let's go. So we got there, checked in, entered the plane, sat down. The plane stayed, oh, 10 minutes, we're still on the ground. 20 minutes, we're still on the ground. More than 20 minutes, we're on the ground. Then later, we saw a family rushing in. They, were, they, they kept us on the ground. You see, they were, they were not even really rushing. They went shopping because you see, they were carrying bags. You see, shopping bag. Mm, we were waiting for food and went shopping. <laughs> it's a large family and they were all flying business class. It's all this uh, Arabian family, so there were many. You know, they have three, four wives and many children. And they all went shopping and they're all flying business class. Mm, you wait for them. <laughs> you can't take off. That's what I'm telling you. This poverty thing, don't, don't get used to poverty. I reject it for you. In the name of Jesus. Uh, they held us down to, for them to arrive. So you can be cleared for flight and miss your flight. So that, that one that we missed the flight, they just act that and we used fly economy. They said, are you business class or economy? They said, well, <laughs> economy, they say it's closed. <laughs> it's closed. And we're dejected. We sat at the airport. Very dejected. <laughs> we had to now sleep. Book one more night in the hotel in the room. Sleep. Ah, it was horrible. It was horrible. You will not miss your flight. In 2024, you will not miss your flight. In the name of Jesus. When they are sharing testimonies this year, your own will be mentioned. I say when they are sharing testimonies this year, your own will be mentioned. You too will have a testimony. So you can be cleared for flight and miss your flight. So, number one reason you can miss your flight is disobedience. So, you must always be obedient. Just because you have boarding pass doesn't mean you can't miss your flight. Oh. You can miss your flight. <laughs> I missed my flight on that day. I won't tell you why. Because it's not a good reason. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> but it's not a good reason. I promise you won't tell anybody. So I was flying alone. I don't even know where I was going or coming from. But I was, we had a stopover at the, at the place. So they had business class lounge. They had first class lounge. So I, I was on first class, that particular leg of the trip. So when I went to first class lounge, they don't have food there. They believe people that fly first class are not hungry. Do you see problem? So they just had snack, biscuits, some kind of small, small thing. And they say if you're hungry, you can order. They will, the restaurant will prepare it. I mean, I prefer a buffet where I see, you know, I'm Nigerian, you know, Nigerian, we like to see the thing, then point this one, give me shuku, uh, catfish. We <laughs> so, first class lounge, everybody just say, quiet, they don't even like you to talk there, Re really, really rich people are the ones that are there. Me, I was just managing myself. No food, no, I say, no, this is not where I want, so I say, where is business class lounge, they show me. So, I went to business class lounge, yeah, hey, I was seeing buffet, food everywhere, so I stayed in business class lounge, I was enjoying food, all eating everything. I didn't know my flight has come. <laughs> <laughs> you, you promise you won't tell anybody. You know that after this story, I'll hear this story anyway. If I hear this story anyway, I will not come to this church again. <laughs> I will not come to this church again. I didn't know they were looking for me in first class. Because when the plane was about to board, they actually said, because somebody flying first class, they, you can't miss your flight. So they came to the first class lounge, said, who is Chris Levon? But he's eating in business class lounge. They couldn't find me first. So when I finished eating, I came back and said, ah, what's happening? Is this like, has it gone? They said, we've been looking for you. <laughs> we've been looking for you. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. So you can be cleared for flight and miss your flight. 
But the beautiful thing, like I told you, prosperity is good. Because of the level of flight of flight, just told me that the next flight is in one hour, so I'll just sit down. This time, just don't wait. <laughs> sit where we'll be seeing you. <laughs> so, we'll just put you on the next flight. Praise God. Is somebody catching what I'm saying? You will prosper in this life. Poverty is not for you. I say poverty is not for you. In the name of Jesus. You can be clear for flight and miss your flight. So, God has said he will carry us on eagle's wings. However, there are things you should key into. Number one is obedience. They say we'll do everything that God has asked us to do. Please walk in obedience this year. Obedience is critical for the blessing. In Matthew 7, they talk about the house that was built upon the rock and the one that was built upon the sand. What do they mean? They say the one on the sand is people that hear the word of God and do not do it. But the one on the rock, he says, people that hear the word of God and do it. They say, when the storm comes, when the wind comes, <laughs> in 2024 in Nigeria, there's likely to be storm. There's likely to be wind. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if your house is built upon what? The rock. It will not fall. What do they mean? That means your life is built upon spiritual principles. When your life is built upon spiritual principles, earthly situations does not shake you. I don't know if somebody's getting what I'm saying. So for instance, for instance, financially, don't build your life on just the, the one plus one of economics. No, no, no. As a spiritual being, we have covenant practices like tithing, giving, things like that. There are many of them. When you plug into that, so your prosperity is no longer tied to the average economy. You, you and God have transactions. Are you getting what I'm saying? You and God have what? A transaction. And God keeps his word no matter the economy. If dollar keeps going up, all God needs to do is to plug you into where you earn in dollars. You know, it's not everybody complaining about dollar going up. I hope you know. Because if your circle matters, if you are only getting people, all of you are saying, this dollar will kill us, this dollar will kill us, this dollar will kill us. You are in the wrong circle. There are people that are happy that dollar is going up. If you're earning dollars, it's before you. I see people here, I promote you to start earning in foreign currency. You will prosper in every currency. In the name of Jesus. You say, but I don't know how it's going to happen. That's not your business. Just agree. Just agree and tap into it. God will open those opportunities. That's his job. That's what I'm saying. When you're practicing spiritual principles, you and God are in a transaction. It's called a covenant. So he keeps his own part, irrespective of where you live on the earth. Irrespective of what? Where you live. That's why you, you're young God, you're, you're in agreement. You're in alignment. So obedience. James chapter 1 says the same thing. That whosoever is doing the, this man that does the word, he shall be blessed in all his deeds. James 1, 22 and 25. He said, don't be a forgetful hearer. Did you give it to me? Yes. 22, yes. But be ye what? I can't hear you. Read with me. But be you what? Doers of the word. And, and what? Not hearers only. Uh, deceiving what? Yourself. That's the bulk of what we're doing in African Christianity. We don't want to obey God. We don't want to walk in the wisdom of God. We just want to shout and pray and tell God, you be doing it, be doing it. You suffer. You set yourself off. You are deceiving yourself. Say, so don't be, do, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because it's easy to be tempted to be hearers only. Just hear every Sunday you hear and you continue your same old life. Nothing changes. What are you going to do differently this year? What are you going to do differently this year? Look at it. It says, next verse. It says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continue daring, that means does it, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, he said, this man shall what? He shall what? You are not answering. He shall what? He shall be blessed in his deeds. He will be blessed. Did they mention country there? Did they say this is only if he lives in the United States? Did they say this is if he relocates to Canada? Then he will be blessed in his deeds. Irrespective of the country where he lives. So obedience is crucial. Obedience is crucial. What are the things you are going to obey? Everything that God has said. That's what they've said in, in Exodus. If God said to spend time in prayer, spend time in prayer. Please spend time in prayer. Again, 
we've even taught this so many times in this church, but some people still haven't caught up with it. Prayer is not making requests to God. That's not what prayer is. That is a component of prayer, but that in itself is not prayer. Just telling God every day what you need. That's, God is not your errand boy. Hello, somebody. God is not your errand boy. That's not what he's here to do. He's not, he's not a charm. He's not a shrine. You just tell him your needs. That's what I'm putting prayer is. Let's just go and tell God our needs. That's not prayer. Prayer is communion. It's fellowship. You are talking to somebody that you are in a relationship with. Is there any married person here that the only time you talk to your wife is, or your husband is when you want something? Very soon, that marriage will end. Are you getting what I'm saying? Very soon, that marriage will what? End. If, every, if, I, if you have friends that every time they call you to so ask for something, after a while, you will stop picking. Yeah, come. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you here, you're the one that does that calling. Some of you, you're the one that picking the calling. So you know yourselves. Nobody does that. So, but I don't know why people, I don't know, I don't know where people got the impression from that we're just, God is a shrine. We just keep telling him, oh God, do this one. Oh God, do this. Every day? No. Your real prosperity will come from the place of fellowship where, where God shows you things. He said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you. So it, it is what he tells you that is more important than what you tell him. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? What he tells you is more important than what you tell him. So when you go into real communion and prayer, you are more attentive than talking. So you fellowship with the Lord. That's where you worship. This January is a good time to spend time in worship and glorifying the name of the Lord. And you are asking him questions. That, Lord, what's your plan for my life this year? What are things I need to take note of? What are things I need to do? Do you know things like money? God doesn't, you don't need to pray for money. If God gives you one idea, oh, one connection, one relationship, one opportunity, sometimes that well, one, will keep bringing water. You know, when you dig a well, you don't dig it every day. Am I correct? You draw from it every day, but it always what comes back. That's what God does. That's what that's what God does. He knows you have needs. He's not, he's not shocked. So if you pray, you think you're you think you're giving God very top class coded information. That God, things hard. <laughs> Jesus. You just say yes, sir. I say no, I'm just shouting, not you. I'm not calling you. Say, Jesus. You say, are you aware things are hard in Nigeria? Someone just inform me now. This this idea. God is aware. Even if things were not hard in Nigeria, you still need money, even anywhere you live. You need daily survival. God is aware. He's aware. So coming to tell him that is a waste of your time and his time. What you should be interested in is where he points you to to go and dig the well. One well. And really rich people have a lot of wells. Really, really, really rich people even have an ocean. I get what I'm saying. So all he needs to do is to give you one well. And you'll be digging from it for a long time to come. You'll find out that then your prayer request is no more give me money. Your prayer request is, Lord, is there any way we can get more wells? God said, of course. There's always more opportunity. Say, dig this other one. You have fashion skill, dig that well of fashion. You have traded, buying and selling gifts, dig this one. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? There's no reason why you should be praying more than millionaires and you are poorer than them. You show something is wrong. The really, really rich people controlling this country, they are not praying. They are digging. But the Christians, when they should be at work, they are praying. That, that, okay, what, what will happen? Angel will carry bag and say this is the first deposit. That's not going to happen. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So prayer is not about shouting and telling God to do something. No, that's not prayer. That's not prayer. Somebody asked the other day, is it that you don't believe in prayer? You must be kidding me. Of course, there's no way as a believer you will not pray. But by blinker prayer, it's not everything we call prayer in Africa that is prayer. There was a time fall and die. Was, uh, maybe it's still raining, I don't even know. <laughs> but when I was young in the Lord, there was a time it started raining. Where every cockroach was a demon. Did, you, did anybody experience that generation? Cockroach? Ha! Nobody's sleeping in this house this night. A cat. Rat. 
So am I going to join such prayer at my level of knowledge of the word of God? Then fall and die, fall and die, fall and die. Your neck now go soon fall. It's your neck now that will fall. So I believe in prayer, but biblical prayer. Check if Jesus prays the way we pray in Africa, if that's how he prayed. In fact, check if the people leading you in those prayers, if, if that's how they got to where they got to. Ask them one day. Just say, sir, you are such, you're so prosperous now. Who prayed for you? Then you start seeing the real things are revealed. That what they are teaching you is not what they themselves did. But this model favors them, also favors you because you are lazy. You, don't, you didn't want to obey God before. <laughs> so the, the system favors everybody, even though it's not really favoring them. But, you know, can man die? Uh, everybody's deceiving themselves. God do it, you will do it. No, it's not true. It's not true. God gets close to 30 years. That things God will not do. God has never applied for one job before. God has never arranged CV before. And there's no way somebody that is, is, has zero preparation for a job will always win somebody that has preparation. That's why, that's why Saudi Arabia and Israel and Nigeria have never won World Cup. Nobody prays more than Saudi Arabia. You can't pray more than Saudi Arabia. That's where every Muslim is praying. Am I correct? You can't be more prayerful than the Israelites than Israel. You can't be more prayerful than Nigeria. Brazil doesn't have to pray, play. Uh, uh, say pray. They don't have to pray. Once every World Cup comes, we know the top four teams that are going to share this thing without any prayer involved. No prophecy. Can't you, can't you, can't you think? We know the top four teams that are going to win without any prayer. Because the team, the quality of the team is more important than any prayer. The quality of the team itself is a spiritual principle. That's what you don't know. Why did, why did God pick Jesus to die? Why didn't he just pick you or anybody here on the streets? Because picking the right quality itself is a spiritual, it's not, it's not laziness. It's more powerful than prayer. There were many prophets, but they had to pick a Jesus that was the only begotten, that was not born of a man. There is a, there, so the quality of the choice you want to marry, you want to have a great man. You like fast and pray for a great man. If you marry a useless man or woman, a bad marriage is short for you. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to fast. <laughs> and you marry this mad man. Somebody see, asked me last week, not a member of this church. God, you know I do counseling globally. Somebody asked me last week, the pastor, the, my boyfriend, he said, I must have a boy for him when we marry. That if we marry, and I have a girl, he will not take care of the girl. No, are you helping me to hear this story? Because now she will go and join prayer line and be praying for God to change his man. Help me hear the story. She says it's her boyfriend. That the agreement is that he, he, he has told her now they have not married. They have not married, but he has alarmed her now, alerted her now, that if you born girl, I will not be in any way responsible for the girl or you. Till you born boy. And this kind of people, and they born three girls. Straight. Is somebody catching this? Then she will not join prayer line now. I said, oh God, do it. God, do it. You can do it. Do it. <laughs> this is Africa for you. This is Africa for you. The principle of prayer cannot override the principle of wisdom. Africa will not progress until we start thinking. I believe in prayer. I'm a person of prayer. You can't even do what we do without prayer. So that's taking for granted. But biblical prayer. Jesus prayed a lot, but biblical prayer. Never begging. You never see him begging God. Biblical that you are doing stupid things, but you want God to come and rescue you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? God, do it. Do it. No, sir. No, sir. Even your team selection, having excellence in your business is part of obedience. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is part of what? Obedience. Preparing that thing 
So if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Preparing that thing in a way. When they called Joseph to come and meet the king, Pharaoh, the first thing is that he changed his apparel, he shaved. They said Egyptians did not like beard. So you can't come and meet the king looking anyhow you like when you want to win his favor. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? But Africans don't want to think. They don't want to apply themselves. Just do it. And it's favoring the prayers and the prayee. Even though people are suffering. People are suffering. It's because that, because that, that can never work. That can never work. That can never work. Somebody's married. His wife lives in Canada. He lives in Nigeria. They say they're praying for a child. Do you see madness I'm facing in Africa? Do you see Africa stressing people out? Is it by Bluetooth you will have these children? This madness going on in Africa, please. This is the madness I'm dealing with in Africa. People don't want to think. The, the wisdom for having children is sex. And sex, even if you're not married and you're having sex, you will still have children. That's what they call it, unwanted because he not send you, whether you want or you don't want. If you're having sex, you go want. They call it unwanted pregnancy. The people that are doing it, they didn't plan for children, but you know, the principle doesn't look your face. The same thing happens with prosperity. Even if you say you don't want to be rich, if you're practicing principle of prosperity, eh? you go rich. You go what? Rich. And guess what? Even if you don't want poor, If you are practicing principles of poverty, you go poor. If you like pray for 100 years, you go poor. That's what's going on in Africa. We're supposed to be the richest yet, we're the poorest. You go poor. It has nothing to do with what you want. Your desire doesn't count if you're not acting in line with it. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with what you want. If you're practicing principles, for peace in marriage, there are principles. So many of them. But a key one is in Ephesians 5. Say, husbands, you will love your wife. Put her first. Wives, you will respect your husband. It's there, Ephesians 5. So the principle is that even when the man is misbehaving, you need to still talk to him respectfully. You will, you will get results any day faster by respect than by insult. It's a scriptural principle. It has nothing to do with how much you fast. Same thing with... The husband to the wife. You will get results faster by love. When people are misbehaving, they still love the, 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 the need. Are you getting it? Come on, say, I'm willing. I'm obedient. I will eat the good of the land. Say it with confidence, I will eat the good of the land. Say it with confidence, I will eat the good of the land. So please, guys, this year is a year of obedience. Obedience to both the written word of God and also the instructions the Holy Spirit gives you. He will inspire you. He will speak to your heart to do certain things. Call this person. Register for this course. Get this certification. Connect with these people. Read this book. Search this thing. He will inspire you. Don't wait till you hear a voice like thunder. A lot of times, the Holy Spirit speaks to you like just your thoughts. Only that you know that they are inspired because they are not your normal train of thoughts. Are you here, somebody? I've done that series last year. The Holy Spirit is inside your spirit. So stop looking for direction to come from outside of you. Direction come from within you. The Holy Spirit and your spirit are now one. It's there in the Bible. So you will just be on your own, and I dare will come. You will just be on your own. You will see one, one loophole. People are complaining a lot about this thing, and your brain will start working. What can we do to solve that problem? That's how wealth is created, by solving problems for many people. Are you here, somebody? That's how wealth is done, not can't pray your way into prosperity. It's a lie. And if you pray away, and small money comes, how will the next one come? You shout again. My brother, if prayer brings money, none of us will go to work on Monday. I get what I'm saying. Johnson, you have worked in a bank for how many years now? 18 years. Wow. How old can be your whole age? You can sit down. He has worked in a bank for 18 years. And so every Monday, do you feel excited? Oh, we're going again for that long week. 
If prayer can bring money, this man will know on Monday he's going to be lying down and speaking in tongues in his on his bed. <laughs> Who could go work? Nobody's going to go work on Monday. I'm just going to pray for two, three hours and, and be calling my bank. Hello? Are you anything? Check, check, check. But Africans don't like this. They don't like this. Just shout. Shout. God will do it. This year you'll be wiser. I said this year you'll be wiser in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet. Thank you, Jesus. They answered back and said, we will do everything that you have what? Prayer is good though, especially when it's coming on top of obedience. When you have put your structures in place and you pray on top of it, keeps away any rubbish, any un un unprecedented, unplanned issues. Yes, prayer is powerful when it's on top of wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Can you take one minute and just say the same thing that these people said to the Lord this morning? That Lord, we will do everything, or I will do everything that the Lord has said. Father, this is the year for obedience. Any wisdom I learn, either from your word, either from good teaching of the Bible, either by the inspiration of your spirits, I receive grace for obedience this morning. Come on, pray. Pray this morning. Lord, give me the strength to maintain obedience. Man, brother, bakasa talakaba. Jebra de kadu saka de le kabos. Rata monda lega disa bola daya. Yaga bo rata laga bam rada sata. E monda rata. Lord, grace for obedience to the end. Obedience to the end. Obedience to the end. We'll be on eagle's wings. We're on eagle's wings this year. Mahanda ya bo kaladada. Rebo kada kare kadosa. Yaka de la broda bahasta. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead and pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Shamanda yalaba. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I want to quickly pray for someone here that is not born again. I have two things I want to do. I want to first pray for someone that needs to give their life to Jesus. This is the first Sunday of the year. Please, can we all bow our heads? Keep that keyboard playing. Can we bow our heads? If you are here and you have, you're not giving your life to Jesus, you are not born again. This is the first Sunday of the year. It's the best way to start your year. I don't know how you came this morning. Maybe somebody invited you, somebody brought you. But I want to have the honor of leading you to Jesus this morning. So put your hand on your chest. If you're here and you're not born again, and you want to give your life to Jesus, just put your hand on your chest. I want to pray with you to lead you to Christ this morning. Put your hand on your chest. Anybody here like that saying, Pastor, I'm not born again, but I want to start my year with God. I want to start my year with God. I want to start my year with God. Thank you, Lord. Put your hand on your chest. Everybody, anybody that wants to give their life to Jesus. If your hand is on your chest, can you raise up your other hand so that I know who I am praying with? Is there anybody here like that today? Whether you're upstairs or downstairs, anybody, anybody. I want to see if there's anybody I'm praying with today. Anybody like that? All right. If your hand is on your chest, say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. All right, they would have given you a flyer or a slip or something, and they would take you out after the service to talk with you. Second instruction. This year, I sense in my heart that is a year for supernatural wealth. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? 
And I think it is tied to the fact that things might be tough financially. And I don't know. But I think that is why God is also, God always does that. When Satan is raising one thing, God raises his own from the other side. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? I sense there's an anointing for supernatural wealth this year. I mean, there are many of you here, you buy your first property this year. There are people here, you will buy property outside the country this year. That amen was not solid enough. There's grace for supernatural wealth. And I have a leading in my spirit to challenge people to give today. So now, please follow the instructions closely. If I'm going to say this only once, I don't have time. I want to ask for people that, now this is for some specific people that will sow a million naira today, or, or this year. You will sow a million naira. Now, for some of you, you can sow it immediately, so please just do it. I don't, and write seed faith on it so that the account people will keep it aside for the seed that it is. So write seed faith on it if you are sowing it. A million naira. Now, but there are some of you here in particular. You are not you are not at the level where you think you can do it. It's you, this is for. It's you, this is for. Some of you here, you can do it immediately. So do, yes, do it today. That's fine. A million naira. But there are people here, God wants to release you into a dimension. You are not at the place where you can comfortably give what I'm saying. It is you, this is for. Please make sure you tap into it. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? That is the instruction. Nobody's going to chase you. You're not even writing any pledge. This is a personal thing you and God are going to do. But this is the instruction. For me, January is always a sowing season. Is somebody going to know what I'm saying? January is always what? Sowing season. Many people, at the end of the year, they ask, where is my harvest? The issue is that, did you put any seed? So, that is the instruction. And please follow what God is laying in your heart, Okay? Now, for the rest of you that are not giving in one million rem, please give as you are led. Some of you, maybe you, God is going to ask you to give more or less. Please feel free to give. Everybody should participate in this to sow a seed this morning. Everybody should. But I'm speaking specifically to a number of people that God is calling to sow a one million naira seed. If possible, this, this year. Let me not. He didn't give me any time constraint. This year. But tap into it. Can we pray this morning? Father, I thank you. Lord, thank you for grace for supernatural wealth. This will be the year we'll prosper like never before. This is the year thousandaires will become millionaires. Millionaires will become billionaires. In the name of Jesus. We key in to the grace for supernatural wealth. We will not struggle this year. No matter the level of hardship that has been discussed in this country, we will only hear it from afar. It will not come near us. I bless everyone under the sound of my voice. I decree this will be your best year so far. I say this will be your best year so far. Apart from supernatural wealth, any other thing that is lacking and pending in your life till this point, I decree in the name of Jesus, there shall be a manifestation in the name of Jesus. I said it shall be a manifestation in the name of Jesus. I curse any spirit of delay in your life. Nothing will hinder you from God's best. Those projects, plans, purposes you have had for many years, this is the year you will take steps on it. This is the year they will enter your hands in the name of Jesus. There are people owing you money, owing you favor, owing you recommendation, owing you anything that is due to you. I decree today in the name of Jesus, it is released in your favor. I say it is released in your favor. Vital information will come to you this year. Information that will change your life. Revelations that will change your life. I decree it's your portion in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone that has sickness or ailments in their body. Please put your hand on your head or any part of your body that that sickness is. Today, by the power of God, we curse that sickness in the name of Jesus. 
today I declare you are healed in the name of Jesus. Every ailment. The Bible said the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Whatever it is called, whether cancer, blood pressure, bone marrow disease, whatever it is called, I declare you are healed now in the name of Jesus. This is the last year you'll be looking for a job. From now, jobs will be looking for you. This is the last year you will hustle for money. From now, money will be rushing to you. God will promote you this year. God will sponsor you this year. God will advertise you this year. God will speak for you this year. In the name of Jesus, you will not struggle anymore. I say you will not struggle anymore. I decree you will have clarity. I say you will have clarity. You will know the next steps to take. Hey, there's someone here under the sound of my voice. You will buy your next property supernaturally. God will position you at the right place at the right time. In the name of Jesus, a breakthrough is coming your way. I say a breakthrough is coming your way. I say a breakthrough is coming your way. I say a breakthrough is coming your way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And for everyone plugging into the one million seed, I pray for you. This is the lowest you will ever be financially. I say this is the lowest you will ever be financially. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for anything troubling you, whether it's maritally or relationally on your office, on your business, God will trouble them on your behalf. God will fight for you. In the name of Jesus, as you act in obedience to what the Spirit is saying to your heart and sow that seed, I decree that this year is the year where money will not be an issue anymore in your life. I decree God will give you a well that will be bringing water forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. You can do better. Come on, give the Lord a big, big hand.